Absolutely. So thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to speak to this group. And um, as the last talk of the day, and as someone who doesn't love hearing my own voice, I will go rather quickly. And then we can have lots of time for questions at the end and happy to take any specific questions at the end. So I'm a colorectal surgeon, as she mentioned, and I have nothing to disclose. So surgery and inflammatory bowel disease could be talked about for weeks, um, textbooks. So that's a really broad topic. But I was asked to speak specifically kind of to the stoma issue question, um, living with a stoma, body image, uh, questions around stomas, because I think as Dr. Bowden talked about what causes a lot of people stress, that's often you know one of the potentials on the top of their list. And as we talk about stomas, I also thought I'd throw in a bit about J pouches because there's often a choice that people are faced with and it can be a hard one to make. So first of all, just really broadly, who needs surgery? When do we operate in the setting of inflammatory bowel disease? When it comes to Crohn's, we're often operating for a particular complication, whether that's a stricture, a narrowing in the small bowel, um, a perforation or an opening in the bowel causing infection, a fistula, like Dr. Bowden talked about. This is a connection between two structures that shouldn't be connected, like your anus and your skin, or two loops of small intestine or intestine to colon, or what can be very frustrating, intestine to skin. Um, also cancer or precancerous changes and bleeding. In the setting of ulcerative colitis, it's a little bit more straightforward. Oftentimes, this is for people who are not responding to medication, what we call medically refractory. You've got in the kitchen sink and we can't get the colitis under control. Um, Precancerous changes called dysplasia. Um, people oftentimes, when we hear about colonoscopy, we find polyps. We can catch cancer before it be, or we can catch it before it becomes a cancer. In people with ulcerative colitis, they can sometimes develop these precancerous changes in an area that's not a polyp, that just looks normal. And so when people start to form these areas of precancerous changes um, in areas that we can't see clearly, then we'll often have to talk about taking out bowel and, of course, for malignancy. And the type of operation that you need is really tailored to the, the disease that you have or the complication that you have. Um, so for Crohn's, it really depends on where in the intestine it is and what the complication is. So one of the more common operations is taking out the end of the small intestine and the first part of the colon. That's called an ileocecectomy. Sometimes we're just taking out pieces of small bowel and as we start to run out of length, if you've had multiple of these operations, sometimes we'll do what's called a structural plasty, or just trying to open up the scar tissue to let the contents through. Sometimes we're taking out just a piece of colon if there's a limited area of colitis. And then there's a whole number of things we can do for anal fistulas. For ulcerative colitis, we're taking out often the entire rectum and, um, and colon. So that's called a total proctocolectomy. And when we do that, when we take out the whole rectum and the, or the whole colon and the rectum, um, you have an option often of whether you want a permanent stoma or something called a J pouch, and we'll talk about that. Rarely for ulcerative colitis are we just taking out a piece of colon because it affects everything, um, but sometimes in an older patient who's gotten good disease control, um, the rest of their intestine looks normal, we can get away with taking out just a piece for cancer. The picture on here is um, a particular operation for Crohn's, and we've learned over time about how to make the connections in our small bowel better, so that it's wider open, it doesn't um, suffer from as much risk of recurrence. We think of some of that recurrence comes from the blood supply to the small bowel or the mesentery. So this is a new way that we've worked on connecting the bowel so that you don't have as high a risk of recurrence. So I want to talk a bit about J pouches because for those with ulcerative colitis, it's a, it's a conversation that you end up having as maybe you run out of medical options or your colitis just won't respond. And it's done in three stages typically. The first stage is this one here, um, that's called a total colectomy. So that means we take out the entire colon, we leave you with what's called an endoleostomy, or bringing up the small intestine to the skin, and leaving your rectum in place. When you're really sick from colitis, even though now you have a stoma, you feel so much better because you don't have this huge burden of inflammation that's making you sick. And usually after this first stage, we get you off all your medication. You're off your steroids, you're off your strong immunomodulator, and you get to just recover, get your energy back, back to normal. Um, and I tell people once they've gotten back to their normal life, their energy, their appetite, their weight, then we go on and we make their J pouch. And what the J pouch is, is it's taking out the rectum. It's making a J shape out of the small intestine to create a new reservoir, throwing that reservoir down to your anus, and then bringing up a temporary stoma called a loop ileostomy that protects that connection and allows it to heal. And then finally, when we know that that connection's healed perfectly, we reverse it. Um, if we weren't doing the J pouch, the second stage operation would be just to take out the rectum and anus um, and leave you with the endoleostomy. And so that can be sometimes hard to think about because that is permanent. Once we take the anus out, there's, we can't recreate one. There's no 
you know, anus transplant yet um, that we can reconnect people to. So J pouch life is very different than normal healthy colon and rectum life, um, but it is better than severe colitis life. Um, so generally, the success is really good. You can live a totally normal, healthy life with your J-pouch. Some of them, quote unquote, fail, and there's a number of reasons for that. It could be infection, that the connection between the um, pouch and the anus didn't work. It could be severe pouchitis or inflammation of the pouch. Sometimes people develop Crohn's of the J-pouch, and they'll get fistulas develop. And so in those cases, we have to convert somebody back to an ileostomy. Continence um, is always talked about, and it really is contributed to where you started. So oftentimes, if your continence isn't perfect going in, we talk about maybe an ileostomy over a J-pouch. The majority of people who are getting pouches have good continence afterwards. Some people deal with seepage, and we can control that often medically. Bowel movements start off fairly frequently initially, kind of like you just had with your colitis when you're going through this, um, but then they slow down over time. So usually five to six times a day is normal. Sometimes there's one bowel movement that can happen at night. And then some people get something called pouchitis. Um, this is inflammation of the pouch. Now, your small intestine was never a reservoir. It was just a stream, a river that was constantly moving the contents through. And your rectum was the reservoir. It was used to stool just sitting there. So when we create a pouch and the stool is sitting there, um, it can make the small bowel inflamed. Some considerations for J-pouch. Um, it empties with gravity, which is something kind of to get used to. So instead of a rectum that can generate some tone and help you push your contents out, for a J-pouch, it's really sitting on the toilet and relaxing your pelvic floor. Um, so the better we can get you to empty that pouch, actually the less bowel movements you'll have during the day and at night. Um, and also kind of counterintuitive, when you have a colon, we want to firm up your stool. We want to have you take you know, fiber, really bulk it up with the J-pouch. Sometimes fiber is helpful and we have to find the right balance, but liquid stool does tend to empty better. And so it can be a learning curve of how you empty with your, with your pouch. Um, when we think about comparing the two and helping people decide, um, obviously the ileostomy surgery is one less surgery than the J-pouch. The bowel habits, you're sort of trading one issue for another. So with an ileostomy, it may make some noise when you're in public. It may gurgle and you may hear things pass through. Um, you may need to empty your bag in a public restroom, which is doable. It's just something you have to get your head around and, and learn how to do. Um, for a J-pouch, you may have severe urgency. You may have to really rush to get to the bathroom in time. You may have some seepage. Um, we'll talk about some different products to help kind of cover the ileostomy and uh, manage that. Both have different risks of complication, so neither is perfect, and we can talk about this more in the question period if people are interested. Um, if you have an ileostomy, you're pretty much done with endoscopy, so we don't have to look at it unless there's a specific issue. Whereas if you do go the J-pouch route, then you do have to have a scope um, to look at your pouch and look. Sometimes there's a little bit of rectum left uh, in between the anus and the pouch, and we have to watch that and make sure it's not inflamed. And of course, there are challenges to both. You have to really be able to use your hands to, to have an ileostomy unless you have good caregivers. Um, and sometimes with the J pouch, you are going back to having a stoma. Um, you know, people were studying quality of life and sexual function after J pouch and ileostomy. Um, and I think what's interesting is because so many people are sick going into their surgery, their quality of life after is really the same quality of life as anyone who didn't have colitis. So I think that's important to remember. Um, by not being sick and inflamed, you can have a really normal quality of life. Um, there's different sexual complications that can happen after your rectum is removed. So sometimes men can get what's called retrograde ejaculation, which is where it goes into the bladder. Um, if somebody's interested in fertility, there are ways to treat that. Um, and just in terms of general sexual dysfunction, um, women tend, in our studies, we don't know why, women tend to be more affected than men, um, but this often normalizes by a year or so after surgery. Let's talk about stomas. Um, this is always kind of the elephant in the room, I think, when it's when we talk about IBD surgery, and so I think it's just important to normalize it and put some pictures out of what, what they can look like. Um, so the very first one over here, this is what's called an end ileostomy. So this is where we bring the end of the small intestine to the skin. Um, I think they look cute. It's like a little rosebud. Um, so you just have to kind of normalize it and know what it, what it looks like when it looks pretty. Um, but it's well averted. It's nice and pink, and that stool just can go right into the bag. This one is a loop ileostomy, so you can see there's two openings. Um, so this is what we use to protect a J-pouch while it's healing. And sometimes if somebody is obstructed, we have to divert them quickly. We'll bring up a loop, and these loops are reversible pretty easily. This one, it's, you can tell it's on the left side, so this is a colostomy. It's a little bit bigger than the ileostomy, but when it's an end, it looks the same. And we really rarely give people loop colostomies because they tend to be much larger and harder to handle. So it's really only in an emergent setting where we would do this one. 
But I think more important than the stomas are the people with the stomas, because people think, okay, the stoma, like I'd rather die than have a stoma. I've heard this before. But really the point of the stoma is to give you your life back. We're not doing this to bring you back. We're bringing it, you know, giving it to move you forward. So this is from the Girls With Guts website. These are just other people that I found on Twitter, just general Google images. There's lots of people out there living with stomas, and they can live a normal, healthy life. So some considerations, and I think this ties in a lot with what Dr. Bowden was talking about, it's not just your inflammatory bowel disease that can cause some of these issues, but the stoma surgery itself. Um, there can be feelings of uncertainty. There are stigmas around bags. You know, they had to wear a bag. I know a family member who had a bag. Um, sometimes people struggle with self-respect, self-confidence, especially around their partner. Um, there can be altered body image issues, and sometimes the sexual issues are just from your own body image, not necessarily from uh, the medical condition. And of course, anxiety and depression around it, um, and impairment in social situations, being afraid to live your house, being afraid to have dinner with friends um, because of the noises it makes, or worried about a leak, things like that. But this is manageable, you know, and um, of course it's easy for me to say, but you know, there's a lot of resources out there. It's just knowing how to tap into them. So just, again, similar to just having IBD, there are good relaxation training, mindfulness exercises to help you handle that anxiety, cognitive behavioral training with a therapist. There are tons of stoma support groups out there. Like I said, there are lots and lots of people who are living with stomas, um, and you can really tap into those networks. Plus, your healthcare provider and your stoma nurses are great resources. I mean, these nurses have seen everything. So if, you know, it's the bag leaking that's keeping you at home, there's different bags, there's different products, there's different skin care. Sometimes the stoma has to be revised, um, and that can give you back that quality of life. Um, and then in talking a little bit about some of the sexual issues, um, we can't underscore, you know, importantly, the, the importance of pelvic floor physical therapy. Um, so I send a lot of patients to pelvic floor physical therapy because there can be tightness of the pelvic floor after surgery, especially if we've done an operation for an anovaginal or rectovaginal fistula. Um, so if intercourse is painful, that is not something that you have to live with. That is something that we can get you into physical therapy for, and there's a lot that we can do um, to make that better. And finally, um, it's important to know your products. So there's a lot out there. Like I said, I send a lot of patients to the Stealth Belt um, website. So if you want to play contact sports, if you want to go water skiing, um, these are neoprene belts. They're fitted to your stoma size, and they're really an excellent um, product. You can't wear them all day. Um, but you can definitely wear them for, for contact sports. I took care of a rugby player, and he wore a stealth belt, and he played rugby. Um, there are special underwear you can get that cover your stoma and kind of hold the bag. Of course, belly bands, certain swimsuits. Um, a lot of people with stomas will wear a bag cover, so there's all kinds of cool covers out there, plus just kind of skin tone ones, um, plus odor eliminators. So, you know, for intimacy, people will make sure their bag's empty. They'll make sure there's the odor eliminator drops, you know, in the bag, and then there's also oral um, anti-deodorants that you can take. So usually bismuth, bismuth um, derived that, you know, if that's something that you're worried about, you can always try that and kind of play around with that before. And of course, knowing your resources, the Crohn's Colitis Foundation has a lot of resources. Girls with Guts um, has a lot of blog posts and just, you know, you learn about how different people are handling their bags and handling their bags with going to college, traveling, you know, intimacy, all of that kind of thing. Um, the Ostomy Association of America has a lot of great resources. And then, you know, your surgeon's office often carries these skills kits. So if you're thinking about getting a stoma or that's something that's coming up for you, we'll give you one of these boxes that's got sample bags and pictures and DVDs. Not that anyone has a DVD player anymore, but they've got a CD in there. I've never actually tried to open it. Um, but there's lots of resources out there. It's just knowing kind of who you can tap into and, um, you know, get that support. And it can make your life much better than potentially it was before. So thank you.